you consider the Mongols Motorcycle Club a gang? Do you believe it's dangerous being a part of a motorcycle club in Australia? Down bikey Sam Abdul Rahim has received some high profile well wishes. Former Mongol Toby Mitchell. Just like Abdul Rahim, his exit from the Mongols is just one of several speculative motives for why he was ambushed and shot by two masked gunmen outside his cousin's Faulkner funeral on Saturday. The government quiz on what it will do. To protect the public that's the question we're gonna answer today does this experience prove the mongols are a motorcycle gang or is it more of the media just trying to push the propaganda of law enforcement right now on insane throttles motorcycle madhouse don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video, but let's jump right into the question here. Is the Mongols a motorcycle club or motorcycle gang? Now, my personal answer is motorcycle club, but there's going to be always two sides of the argument on this one. Always going to be the news media, always going to be the police, and then you're stuck in the middle trying to figure out the answer to that question. It's an age-old question since the media and the police have used motorcycle gang. This all goes all the way back to Hollister and probably even before then, where the media has always portrayed clubs in a bad light in order to get more subscribers, clicks, whatever, in modern days, all that good stuff. Australia. Let's talk about Australia. Australia is a way different culture than what you see here in the United States. The United States has its biker culture. Australia has its. Uh, England, Europe and so on. It just depends what country you're in, the culture that you're going to be exposed to. Now, in the United States, granted, you don't see some of the stuff you do in Australia as far as the money, the activities, all that type of stuff. But before we even get into the activities of some of the clubs over there, or bikies as they call it, you have to remember, although that Australia and I believe New Zealand are two separate countries, so don't get that messed up because they get pissed. Trust me, I know. Even though they passed these tough anti bikey laws, that their crimes only, let's see, pertain to like under 1% or something, the study had to say. With all the crime that happens in Australia, New Zealand, one under one percent—that's pretty huge. One thing I do notice about bikies in Australia is anytime they quit or leave the club, it's huge news out there. Meaning. They get all kind of airtime. They get to put their dirty laundry out on the internet in, in these news articles. That's the culture out there. Yes, we see it here in the United States as well, but not as much as you would see it out there. They're more of, uh, how can I say it? Let's put it plain. Superstars out to the general public in uh, Australia. I wanted to go over first this right here out of 7news.com. Former Mongols bikey Sam the Punisher Abdul Rahim reveals he died twice after being shot in Faulkner. Now, the reason I bring up this one is because he recently went on a podcast and he did say that the shooting didn't have anything to do with his ex club. But he did give some warning about joining a bike club. It's a bike club out there. 
And it goes on to say, I just remember getting pumped with bullets. It felt like just punches, popping punches to the ribs. Now, in this article, it says uh, the former uh, Mongo Bikey has revealed how he fought back from the brink of death after being shot in broad daylight in Melbourne. Uh, he was ambushed uh, midday uh, on June 25th while leaving his cousin's funeral. Like, who hit somebody at a funeral? I'm just asking that stuff. Now, he was interviewed by Sam Newman on his podcast, You Cannot Be Serious, and said initially thought he was being pranked when he saw a gunman. Quote, I looked and I just seen something pointed at me. I go, nah, surely this is a joke. Then he got pumped with bullets and stuff like that. Now, his nickname's The Punisher. He drove himself to the hospital. Uh, being part of a bike club, and this is a quote, is not what people think it is, but it's also not a good thing. Again, ex club member, and I believe uh, Toby Mitchell, who is pretty much a superstar out there, who left the club, uh, as far as I know, anyway. Went and visited them, stuff like that. Now, you got to remember, with Australia, there are different cultures within the club scene. You got a lot of uh, Arabic. You got a lot of Indonesian. All that kind of stuff mixed in to the melting pot of the club scene over there. Where, not so much over here, because you still have a separation, if you will, by the type of clubs that are here and who's in them, who's not, all that good stuff. Remember that. Different cultures within this stuff. Now, you do see a lot more type of what we would call gangster stuff over in Australia. You do. You can't deny it. It's all over the place. It is what it is. So it is a different atmosphere over there. Now, because they're like that over in Australia, does that mean they're like that here in the United States? I don't believe so. Because mostly of what you hear over here is people doing low-level stuff. And what I'm talking people, I mean individuals. I'm always going to bang that out on this show that it's individuals that do this kind of stuff, and it ain't the club as a whole. It isn't the club as a whole. There was that recent ruling, and this has got a lot of people up in arms, which, hey, I can see why. Because you either got people on one side that are ignorant of the facts that were presented in court, or... You got people that are buying the press releases out of the Department of Justice, out of uh, the courts, all that kind of stuff. But with any legal case, there's all kinds of moving parts. And one of the biggest reasons why that Judge Carter denied the motion to vacate, and which, by the way, myself and Mooch is going to be covering this, when the transcript comes out. Because when you're reading from the news articles that are coming out on it, they are not giving the entire ruling and no context whatsoever of the ruling. People are just nitpicking what they want and then running with it. No, we're going to get the whole transcript. We're going to go through it. Because there are two opposing views on this. You got mine who thinks, yeah, uh-huh. And then you got Mooch that don't. So we're going to have a civil discussion like we talked about, about this whole case. But let's go back, push him out of the way, little Dave I'm talking about, and go to what the judge was saying in some of those quotes that he had in the newspaper. And one of the biggest ones, one of the biggest reasons why he denied the motion to vacate was because he didn't believe that if he granted a retrial, 
that the Mongols would succeed. And let's be honest. Some events really didn't help itself. For instance, when I covered this story, it was about three weeks or so before the ruling came out on this. And that was six motorcycle uh, club members, I can't believe that the, the, uh, the Department of Justice said that, found guilty of racketeering conspiracy, including murder. And this happened out of Chattanooga, or what, uh, it involved the Clarksville chapter of the Mongols. And a federal grand jury convicted six Tennessee men for racketeering and other charges involving murder. That came out three weeks before the verdict. And I said at the time, and you can go watch the video, there is no way possible that that judge can grant that motion for a retrial. Not when something like this just come out, because you got to remember, the Mongols were convicted in that 2018 deal of RICO. Not one person, but a whole organization. And within that punishment phase, the judge was looking, he actually had to come in and overrule the jury, because the government wanted to take the Mongols trademark. This is a first of its kind type of case. And if the judge threw a retrial back in there, all this stuff would have came back. And let's just say the judge wouldn't have his spotlight. Because right now, we covered this as well. The Mongols are in the Ninth Circuit. Now, you have your initial state trial, then everybody appeals. This is at the Ninth Circuit. And there was arguments on September 23rd, a couple weeks before the motion to vacate. In this case, and I believe Judge Carter has said this, that this is a question that needs to go to the Supreme Court in order to have some standards and case law to set it because there's nothing like this out here so he had every reason not to grant that motion to vacate he actually had no choice in the matter because of clarksville and it's already in the ninth circuit and any trial judge at the district level, level, if he can get his case heard in the Supreme Court, man, is that a career hitter right there. But we'll go, you know, there's a lot of aspects of that going, but I want to get back to the original question here. Are they a gang or are they a club? Again, my belief is a motorcycle club because my belief is always going to be that the majority within the club are good, hard-working people. I do not believe that a whole our entire organization can be recoded. I do not believe it's fair. I do not believe it's right. Because they're targeting people that have probably no records on them. They go work hard and all that good stuff, support their families. And they just want to ride their motorcycle. So to be labeled a gang member where it's a very real possibility that you can lose your rights to own weapons and other type of stuff where you're put on a gang uh, task force list or no fly list, something like that. It's ridiculous to me, and it's actually unheard of, and I hope that's going to be one of the questions posed in the appeal. I didn't get to see the transcripts of the Ninth Circuit appeal, but it went in front of a three-judge panel. And these are all questions that have to come to be answered to make an informed opinion. But me being around the scene and stuff like that, I know how the courts operate. I know how cops operate. 
So it's a simple, no, they're not a motorcycle gang to me. Yeah, you get a few idiots that go out and do something. I believe the Clarksville trial was timed just right to get a verdict in for to give cover to Judge Carter on this. Perfectly timed. And then it was perfectly timed with the Ninth Circuit of Appeal. People at the federal government aren't stupid. They really are not. They do things for a reason. So what do you guys say? What do you guys think in Australia? Is it dangerous to be a club member out there? Do you have different traditions where it's more on the making money side? Or do you just have a few individuals like over here in the United States that do that? Very interesting stuff. Let me know uh, what you guys think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe the video. We're going over to the second half of the show right now with China Dow. You should be brought over there. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for the second half of this show, Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. China Dow's coming in the studio right now. Rock on.